here with Rod and Tina. Let's get straight into the weather. It's dark, it's gray, it's gloomy. You know, if you got someplace important to go today, I wouldn't even bother. Let's get into the news now. Have you guys heard of this Harlem Shake? Hi, Jenny. I'm Jenny. Oh, you're absolutely going to love it here. I can't even begin to tell you about half of all the amazing things about Shulik. For one, they do the best job of salting the sidewalks in the winter. It's like they know your boots, though extremely fashionable, aren't really built for grip. And so I'm like, really appreciative of that, you know? Oh, and did I mention that the school is completely fine if you want to submit your assignments either written or printed? Some schools are really anal about that, but at Shulik, it's just all about being comfortable, being yourself, not being judged. It's all that really matters. Oh, and the students here are completely not the judgy type either. I mean, I have friends with parents from like 10 different countries. How many people are interviewing here? I'd say about 400 or so, so if you think about it, it's not really all too bad. Just think of it like this. You have a 1 in 400 chance of winning the $1 million lottery. Oh my god, that could be amazing. That'd be so amazing, right? But honestly, even if I did win the lottery, I would still go to Shulig. I'd just open up a boutique, maybe sell like all the latest fashion trends, you know? The school's completely accommodating things like that. And speaking of accommodating, they also completely cater to your learning style. What's your learning style? I'm an EFMJ. Are you okay? You're not looking so good. Did you forget the seven candidates rules? Do you want me to recite the first chapter of doing right? I need, I need a bathroom. We have five different bathrooms. We have one which is more social, one that's more tranquil, and one that's also more spacious. What's your personal preference? The closest one. I know just the one. Are you okay there? Just a minute. How's the bathroom? Jake, you gotta get it together, bud. You gotta get it together.
You seem lost. I was just somewhere else. How odd that you were somewhere else only moments ago, yet here you are. I presume you need an exit. Yes, please. I can't be here right now. I've got to get back to my interview. On the other side of this vehicle lies a hallway. At the end of the hallway lie three doors. Take the center door. It will lead you away from here. Funny thing about doors. Although you're sure of what you leave behind, you're never quite sure of what lies ahead. Simply a word of warning. Jake. Hi, I'm Erica. I know you're scared, and I know you don't know if you can trust me. I also know you feel out of control right now, but don't worry, we're here for you. Listen, I don't know who you are, or where I am, or what is going on here. I need to get back to the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry. Shh. I have a- It's going to be okay. Why are you shing me? A few minutes ago, I was in a bathroom preparing for an interview. Then, I woke up in a parking garage. And, and now I'm here. I, <clears throat> I don't know what to do. You don't have to do anything. Just come in and have a seat. Okay, okay. What choice do I have? Now, where were we? Oh, right, Sonia, please continue. I already donated one kidney to save my great aunt, and for whatever reason, they wouldn't let me donate my other one to save my friend. Why doesn't anyone understand my need to give? Okay, that is ridiculous. Shh. This is a safe space, which means it is all about respect. That means you can't speak unless you have the stethoscope. Thank you, Sonia. Who's next? Hi, everyone. My name is Mayhul, and I'm a pre-med. Hi, Mayhul. I haven't checked pre-med 101 in five days. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I was walking downtown, and I saw a couple doing marijuana in a doorway. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had to do something. So I opened a needle exchange program out of my garage. In the summer, I'll be going to a small fishing village outside of Pyongyang, North Korea, where I'll be adopting my fourth orphan. Here's my favorite. I found her wandering the Great Wall. Ooh, nice. Wow. Oh yeah? Well, I'm going to be a urologist at Johns Hopkins. To get my foot in the door, I spent six months on the streets guys, of Baltimore. Guys, guys, These behaviors are problematic, and you are not holding the stethoscope. You are all here because you want to change. Mm -hmm. These behaviors are the reason why you find it difficult to form and maintain relationships, and the reason why people find you unrelatable and weird. That will look bad in an application. Are you guys serious right now? Do you even hear the words that you are saying? This guy, he almost died trying to network with someone that has no bearing on whether or not he gets into medical school. This guy here has so many kids that I don't even know how he can afford to feed them, let alone study or anything else. And you, I really appreciate your good intentions, but opening up a needle exchange for people smoking marijuana? That makes no sense. Are there any normal people in here right now? I understand you're frustrated. I think it would be therapeutic for you to share something with us. 
Honestly, I really don't see the point. I, I don't know what's happening right now. The first step is admitting that you have a problem. Why don't you start by introducing yourself? Okay, why not? Hi, I'm Jake. Go on. Hi, I'm Jake and I'm a pre-med. Um, I'm doing a physiology undergrad. Um, I really like medicine, I've been giving it a lot of thought. Um, I think it's where I want to be. I've been studying really hard, put my hours in for my MCAT. Got a decent score. Um, I'm just really hoping to get in this year. What about volunteering? Yeah, I did some volunteering at the end of third year at um, a soup kitchen. Did you work more or less than 500 hours? <laughs> more than 500 hours? Did you cook or serve? I served. I served, okay. Jake, have you ever done anything meaningful? I mean, now that I think about it, it's not so much about the time spent, but, but the difference you make. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time in that soup kitchen. But I'd like to think that the time I did spend meant a lot to the people that I worked with. People like George. George had come in, he was really down on his luck. He had just lost his wife, his car broke down, lost his job. I was just helping him down the stairs one day and we started talking. Things just started coming out. Now I know that conversation isn't going to help him bring any of those things back, but I'd like to think that what little I did made a big part in his life, made a little bit of difference, you know? I just... Oh, time's up. So it seems like standard procedure. There you are. Do you people have any sense of punctuality? So, here at the Almsaz Verifier Call Center, we represent the first line of defense against liars, criminals, and Queen students. Nobody slips through the cracks. The coffee, Mr. Ginza. There's cream in here. Somebody fired this guy. Thank so, you, as I was she saying, said, ping pong is a sport. Denied. <laughs> and right here, we have the field team's command center. Field team? Well, why else do you think we asked for the verifier's addresses? So, over here is where the initial screening process begins. For example, less than 48 spots. Shredded. Wrong address. Shredded. Misclassified activity. Shredded. Transcripts late. Shredded. Now, what do you guys think we would do if the references weren't in on time? We call to notify them? Shred? Good answer, Priya. You're going places. Hussein, give Priya your office. Should've said shred. Should've said shred. Now, if somehow an application manages to make it past the initial screening process, this is where we actually call the verifiers. So, let's go meet your future colleagues. This is Rajmi, our current employee of the month. She managed to deny a full 98% of the applications she verified last quarter. So Rajmi, how's it going? Sorry Mr. Ginza, I'm just on the phone right now. Oh, they were only 15 at the time. And over here, we have Saad. He's the best shredder in the business. Why don't you shred one for us, Saad? You wanna see some shredding? Whoa, 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 not that one. But sir, this one lacks even a single reference. Ah uh, yes, but do you see that mark right over there? That right there means that this is a Swoman applicant, and we never shred those. Never. And here is our interrogation room. This is where we waterboard the references. Come, let me show you a demonstration. You waterboarded my references? What do you mean, my references? I, I have an interview with Shulik. I'm trying to get there right now. We've been breached. We've been breached.
wrong with you, man? You can't just be walking around like that. It's dangerous out there. What are you talking about? It's a research lab. No one actually wears goggles and gloves. No. The researchers. Look closer. Gosh, Shh. look at- They'll catch their attention. Don't startle the researchers. Don't startle them. What happened to them? Why are they zombies? This is a research lab. What did you expect? Happiness? Ponies? This is what happens here. The long hours, the lack of sunlight, the chemical exposure. They all take their toll. No, 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 no. I gotta get out. I can't be here. I gotta get I out know. the interview. I, I know. I had it all. A sharp mind and a bright future. Dear mother made damn sure to breastfeed me until the age of four so I reached my intellectual potential. And I did. And then, at the age of 12, I decided I wanted medical school and nothing could stop me. I became the perfect applicant. I was wanted across the country. It all changed in the spring of 05. The morning of my interview at Schulich. What, what happened? I was wearing a suit like yours. It was just like yours. I walked into my interview. I had it. It was my destiny. And then they asked me, why do you want to be a doctor? And I told them, nurses. Daddy always told me, Joseph, you tell the truth. And I did it. I did it, Dad. Where am I now? What can I do when I don't get into medical school? What can you do but research? Wait a minute. You've been here for eight years? Why haven't you tried to escape? I mean, anything's got to be better than this, right? You think I haven't tried to leave? You think I didn't have a life outside of this? A family? Why don't you try to walk out of here? It's not that simple, man! You can't just leave! As soon as you try, they start to you with new grant proposals and first author publications and... and then... you're right back where you started. Aren't the zombies a problem? Oh. Yeah, the zombies too. But it's too late for us! We've been here too long! We're stuck here! Forever! It, it's almost sundown. Before the research get active, I'm gonna have to teach you how to harvest the agar so we can make a tasty stew. What? Joseph, I, I don't want to harvest agar. Done. Come here and have a seat. Have a seat? Have a seat? No! I don't have time for this! We both know that's not going to work. Are you ready to have a seat? Who are you? Hey! I recognize you! How could you not recognize me? I've been with you the whole time. I'm that voice shouting from the recesses of your mind that you are not suited for medicine. I am the terror that gripped you and brought you to your knees in that bathroom. 
I am a direct consequence of your complete lack of extraordinary tendencies. I am a manifestation of your fears and frustrations. I am who you really are. No. Look, this is ridiculous. You can't just sit there and claim things about me. You don't even know me. I don't think you understand. Jake, I know you very well, for I am you and you are me. I see the flash of realization in your eyes as you begin to understand who I am, what this is. Jake, I'm going to make this as clear as possible for you. This is your reckoning. You deserve to go no further. Your potential has been reached and now you must search for contentment and what few small achievements you have to show for yourself. Please, Jake, none of this is necessary. Stay here and enjoy the tranquility of failure. Stop here. I have only your best interests in mind when I... No. No. My whole life has led to this moment. Jake, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. Good job, Jake. Are you okay in there? I'm ready for this. 